So this is a Firelight MS5210UD. This is a very interesting panel because apparently there was some sort of a fire. It didn't trip, and that's all the information I got. Literally, as you see it, with the wires cut off, no lock, just sitting there is how it's been. And then when uh, my company got bought out, we threw everything away. So I figured it might be interesting to see what happens if we fire this thing up. I have a suspicion that it's going to work fine, but however it plays out is how you're going to see it. We do have a zone list here. So we had six zones connected. If I have all uh, N-line resistors on all of the zones and all of the NACs, it should power up in a trouble-free state. Come on. One of the other nice things about these is you can just pop the door right in. I have it all jumped out, and I also had to go find a battery connector. I do have some batteries, 24.52 volts. That looks good to me. Hopefully we don't get a fireworks show. And that was it. Okay, we got a trouble for no battery, which is fine. We're gonna plug the battery in, and that goes away. So far, so good. We have a green light. It's been on for however long, maybe 30 seconds, and it is sitting there just fine. Now, I could very easily just go and short one of the zones and trip it and see if it goes off, but what fun is that? Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, let's try a bell trouble just for fun. Yeah, bell two, oh, bell two, yeah. So that works, so that's encouraging. I just had this laying around. This is an old system sensor. So I figured I'd make sure it worked. And as it turns out, it does not. It makes a little bit of a clicky noise, but it is dead. I have a giant box of those old AVs and I can't find them, but I do have one of these, which is brand new. I can tell you from personal experience that on these particular P2Rs, high volume, it's so loud, it will, it will hurt your soul. I don't know how else to put it. That's low. All right, so we know that that's enough of that nonsense. All right, so I've got this basically roughed in here. We're going to have a smoke detector here. We have an AV or a horn strobe or a bell or whatever you want to call it here. And we just have a basic crappy BG-8 pull station, I think is what it is. CO detector, obviously, and uh, that's it. When you wire a zone up, you start at the panel with your wires. You go to the first thing and then you go to the next thing, and at the end, you have an end-of-line resistor, and then the panel sends a sh uh, small current through there to see the resistor and make sure that everything works. So that's how you do that, and that will go in through the back and connect up to the zone. I've got the power hooked up there, and I have it run up here to the 24-volt resettable right there. All that means is when you reset the panel, this one will power cycle and this one will not. With these CO detectors, you want to be able to reset them, the power on them, so that they reboot and go through their uh, test cycle. This has two sets of wires coming out for your in and out. So you basically, you put your resistor on one set of reds and blacks, and then you put your loop, which is your zone, on the other side. With the, with the actual horn strobe off, these two are separated and at, that would break the, break the circuit and put the panel into trouble. I got everything all wired up to the devices, and that's the quick and dirty that took about five minutes. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is hook up the AV or the bell. All right, and then we'll just jam these behind here. So we got the pole right there. So that is gonna go on zone one, which is right here. It's hard to see, but it'll say plus and minus. Next is gonna be the smoke detector, zone two. Jam that down behind there. And then zone three is gonna be the CO detector. There we go. That. So now, everything is hooked up the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so that's connected. Okay. And then we take the smoke detector, and that just kind of sticks on here, and you spin it around until it grabs and clicks in place. There it is. And then the cover will go on the CO detector. All right, I have everything closed up. I have the battery connected, but nothing's gonna happen until I put AC in. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. Let it settle down for a second, and it looks like we are good to go. The first thing I wanna do before I do anything else is see if we can get a trouble. So I'm gonna pop the head off of the smoke detector. And we do. 
F2, which is fire zone 2. And popping it back on, takes it out of trouble. Yep. All right, we're good there. There we go. So the beeping has stopped. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put it in a silent walk test. You do mode and then you spell out the word walk on the, with the numbers, which is uh, 9255. 9255. Enter. We're going to go with a silent walk test, which is one. Zero is an audible walk test. And there you go. We have an alarm on uh, zone two. Now we know that part of it works for the most part. And now we got to go into the programming. First thing we want to do is we want to get out of walk test, which is mode and then norm, which is 6676 mode. 6676 six, and if it's right we'll just go right back to a green light and we're going to program the third zone the co detector for supervisory and i have to remember how to do that so i'm going to look it up and then we'll do it for the pull station we're going to go with zone type one which is a pull station for zone two we'll go with a smoke detector just a two wire smoke detector and then for the co we're going to go with zone type four which is supervisory auto resettable this uh manual is available on the internet it's where i found it if you google firelight ms 5210 ud you will find this same pdf file that's exactly what i did the first thing we want to do is put it into programming mode which is p-r-o-g mode seven seven six four enter for the most part you're going to do programming level one so we're going to go like that and now what we have is addresses the number on the left indicates what you're messing with and the number on the right indicates what it's set to zones one through ten is going to be address 64 through 73 and we want to change those so that they are what we want them to be. For zone one is a pull station and we're going to make that zone type one. One. Enter. 65 which is zone two. We're going to leave that as zero because that's a regular two wire. And for 66 which is zone three we're going to make that zone type four. And that should be all of the programming we have to do. Mode six six seven six which is normal and that should be it so no time like the present i'm going to test that out and that's what we want zone three su so su3 all right now i'm going to test the smoke detector Come on now. There it goes. All right. I would say that is a successful test. So we'll go ahead and silence this. And I'll pop the door off. Silence one. Silence two, so that means both uh, both NAC, uh, both AV circuits are silenced. So at this point, I'd say we have a successful test. Uh, we'll reset it, and I hopefully it won't trip again because it uh, there might still be some smoke in there. There we go. So that's your resettable power resetting the CO detector, and we know that's going to work now as soon as the light turns on. Takes a second for it to boot up. So far, so good. We'll do the pull station. So, it should be the same thing. There we go. Zone one. Silence that. We'll go ahead and reset the pull station. I'm not a huge fan of these things. They're a pain in the neck. All right, so there you have it. A Firelight MS5210UD that was supposedly involved in a fire and did not trip. Worked perfectly fine. There were no issues whatsoever. In fact, uh, there, there wasn't even any damage that I could see. So I, I, I will probably never know what really happened, but I'm not surprised that this worked, but I was 
kind of interested to see what would happen. So I guess that's pretty much it. Until next time, have a good one. Mm -hmm.